Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about protein versus moisture. This topic has taken me so, so, so long to understand, but I think I finally wrapped my head around it and it's really transformed my hair and also the way I put together my wash routine and my styling products. And I've seen such a big difference in my hair since I actually understood and mastered the concept of protein and moisture and all the things of the sort. And I can finally say I'm happy with how my hair's been looking. I think you guys could probably tell, but over the last five, six months, my hair, my hair, well, <laughs> my hair hasn't necessarily had the elasticity, glossiness, definition, and um, volume that I used to have. And today I will explain why, but now, as you can see, I definitely have achieved that beautiful glossy hair that I used to have again and I'm so happy about it. So let's talk about protein and moisture, protein versus moisture, why we need protein, how to tell if you have a protein overload, how to tell if you have a moisture overload, how to fix all of that. Let's just understand these main concepts. So I'm going to break it down really nice and simple. I want to disclaim, I actually have learned a lot from Mains by Mel. I'm going to leave her original video here so that you can watch it. She's a little bit more scientific. She's a proper hairstylist, hairdresser. She knows her stuff. So I really highly recommend watching that after you watch this video as well. But I'm just going to give you kind of more of a basic, simple rundown that everyday people can understand um, from my experiences and what I've learned. So let's get into it guys. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why our hair needs protein and moisture. So our hair is actually made up of a protein called keratin. I didn't actually know that and now I understand why there's so many like keratin treatments and blah 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 blah. So protein is really important for hair because it helps to strengthen hair. If you have brittle hair that easily snaps, um, protein really helps to replenish, rejuvenate and restructure hair. So that is why protein is so important. Moisture is really important because it adds shine, glossiness, it hydrates your hair, just really fuels it with hydration, which gives you shine and glossiness and everything you want in hair. So that is why we need protein and moisture. That doesn't necessarily explain the type of balance you need when it comes to protein and moisture. Different hair types, and I'm specifically talking more about um, density and porosity rather than like two, three, or four hair. So hair porosity actually actually plays the biggest role in understanding what your hair needs and if it needs more protein, more moisture, if you have a, uh, an overload of protein or if you have an overload of moisture. Hair porosity really, really makes up a big part of this whole topic. To quickly give you a rundown on porosity, um, I have low porosity hair, which technically means my hair follicles are a lot tighter and there's not as much gaps in my hair follicles, which means product isn't as easily absorbed into my hair. When it comes to high porosity hair, it means the follicles in the hair are a lot bigger and there's more gaps in them, which also means that it sucks up all the amount of moisture it can get and it just kind of sucks everything up. So those are the two extremes. There is obviously middle porosity hair where it's a really good balance of both. Um, and let's talk about low porosity, medium porosity and high porosity hair and what they need in terms of pro, pro, uh, pro blah, 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 and what they need in terms of protein and moisture. I'm going to pop up a mains by Mel chart on the screen because this really breaks it down really nice and easily. I love charts. They work well for my brain. It's structured, it's organized, all the things. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at this porosity chart. So low porosity hair. If your hair has low elasticity and I mean you can do the strand test. So take a little strand of your hair. And if it stretches when you pull on it, it has good elasticity. But if it stretches way too much, like mine, just stretches and stretches forever, and then when you let go, it falls really limp and flat and just kind of dies, that means I have um, poor elasticity. Essentially, it's the bottom one. It stretches to infinity and then just kind of falls off and falls really limp. This means you might have too much moisture in your hair and you need to balance it out with some protein. If your hair has good elasticity, it stretches and it comes back, you have balanced the protein and moisture pretty well. Your hair likes more moisture and only a little bit of protein. And if you have low elasticity, meaning that your hair doesn't stretch at all and it kind of just snaps off, you really um, your hair is really not a fan of protein and you need a lot more moisture. 
that is where I used to sit. So I used to sit um, in that my hair hated protein as I could hardly use protein. Every time I used it, my hair looked horrible. So I kind of weaned off protein for about a year and then after a really long time of not using protein, you can imagine my hair just started to stretch and stretch and stretch so much and it had a massive moisture overload. So I needed to balance that out by reintroducing specific protein products into my hair routine, but we're going to cover that topic a little bit later. So let's talk about um, medium porosity. Medium porosity, you guys have a pretty, you're pretty good. Um, if your hair has no stretch and it snaps, it needs moisture. If your hair has good elasticity, you're doing great, you don't need anything. Poor elasticity, ease off the moisture a bit and add a little bit of protein into your hair routine. Now, high porosity is a little bit different. If your hair stra uh, has no stretch at all and brittle and it snaps, it needs moisture, but you need protein as well for high porosity hair. I'm confused by what she means there, but that's fine. Anyway, you can read the rest of the chart. So high porosity hair, if it has poor elasticity, it's got way too much moisture and you need to add protein. Okay, so now comes to the question of how the heck do I know if my hair needs more protein or more moisture? Let's give some signs of what your hair may look like if you have a protein overload. This is also from Means by Mel. So if you have a protein overload, your hair could be stiff, crunchy, brittle, dull, stringy, frizzy, and really break quite easily. If you have a protein overload, you could have fluffy, limp hair that's super weighed down, doesn't have any holds, um, it's frizzy, and it's extra soft. That's what my hair was. It was just, it had no hold, which means I could hardly get any volume. Um, my hair was flat and soggy, everything was weighed down, I, I just, my curls weren't even forming because my hair was too soft, my hair wouldn't even last one day, where I used to be able to wa wash my hair for like, where I leave my hair for like three days after I wash it and it would look perfect. So, that is some little signs of if you have a protein or moisture overload. Now, if you have realized that, oh, that makes sense, my hair is limp and fuzzy and flat, and all the products I use have no protein in them, you need to switch things up. And that was where I was. So um, same goes for someone with high porosity hair and they're using way too much protein and they've got a protein over, you know, you, know, you get me. We're going to talk about some routines that could fit well for each type of porosity hair to make sure you're keeping that moisture and that balance. And also let's talk about how to re reverse the imbalance. So let's talk specifically about my experience first because that's what I know most about. So as I said, I had a moisture overload and it did really make sense because I shied away from using protein in my products because I knew it didn't work well for me. Um, but the issue was instead of just cutting it out in a small way, I cut it, I sliced it all together. So what I needed to do to reverse that imbalance was actually do a protein treatment mask. This is the one I used. I really like this mask. I used it in the shower for two wash days in a row. And immediately my hair was bang. It was back to normal, back to the way it should be. But I can't be doing that protein mask every time I wash my hair because then my hair will be have a protein overload and low porosity hair really doesn't like having a protein overload. Basically by doing that, by using that mask twice, I just reversed the effects of the moisture overload and balanced things out to come to an even playing field. But from here on out, this is what I am going to do. I'm going to focus on using a clarifying shampoo, a conditioner that doesn't necessarily have protein in it, so more of a moisturizing conditioner. For my styling cream, this product I'm going to make sure has protein in it. Um, I like the Bondi Boost one or the Shea Moisture one. They both have protein in it and I feel like that using protein in my leave-in cream and just that one product in particular will be enough protein for my hair to suffice and it will keep the balance and then I'll use a hydrating mousse or gel that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to do moving forward and I think that's a really good option for people with low porosity hair. So make sure one of the products you're using in your wash day has protein in them, but I wouldn't do more than one or two because you might just throw things out of whack a little bit. 
When it comes to high porosity hair, I would personally be use a restructuring, repairing shampoo and conditioner, both of those, and then say a leave-in cream that doesn't necessarily have protein and then a styling mousse or gel that does have protein. So you want to have a little bit more protein in your routine to make sure your hair is getting the protein it needs to fill in those gaps because you've got a lot of gaps in your hair cuticles. Um, also, if you want to reverse the effects of a protein overload, get in the shower, wash your hair, and do a really hydrating mask that doesn't have any protein in it. I would do that, say, twice, and um, this will definitely help reverse those effects. So I'm going to do a quick recap. Our hair needs protein and moisture because our hair is made up of protein and we need moisture to make sure it's shiny and glossy and hydrated and all the things above. Um, low porosity, medium porosity and high porosity hair need different amounts of protein and moisture. If your hair is soft and fluffy, you probably have a moisture overload. If your hair is brittle and breaks, you probably have a protein overload. It's time to balance that out. Understand your porosity. Do the string test, so take a little piece of your hair, check the elasticity. If it breaks straight away, you probably have a protein overload. If it stretches and stretches and stretches forever, you probably have a moisture overload. Start to understand your um, hair routine and implement the right things for your hair personally. I'm going to show you, kind of like a before, I noticed my curl pattern was just shocking as well. When I had a protein overload before, and this was my hair when I freshly washed it yesterday after using a protein mask for the second time and it just looks so good. So I hope this video has helped you guys. I know I'm not the best person to break it down um, scientifically, but I hope you kind of got the general gist. If you're looking for some more information, there's great articles online if you just look it up, but also just highly suggest watching Mains by Mel's video. Today, I'm really just showing you breaking it down and telling you my experience in having low porosity hair and using too much moisture my hair just wasn't looking good but now that i know that i have a good routine to balance everything out my hair's looking a lot better and i think the next video i'll do is um my protein and moisture balancing routine so more of a demonstration but today was just a sit down sorry feels the information overload but so many people wanted to know so yeah I hope you enjoyed today's videos. I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. I love you. Bye.